Let's get back to another round of Blues Day Tuesday with Drez and Big Nate. I just tried to tap the camera. Yeah, it doesn't sound as cool on this one. It is Brews Day Tuesday, brought to you by the Cellar Restaurant and Six Pack Store in downtown Blacksburg, where they have an abundance of delicious beer that I will perhaps be drinking again next month. In the meantime, it is dry January. We are doing a kombucha show because the lovely BB is all into kombucha, and therefore uh, I've been drinking some kombucha. <laughs> and it does have lots of uh, benefits and stuff, which we will get to here in a bit, but... We, uh, we started with yours, and now we're going to try theirs. So I just popped uh, the Health health Aid Kombucha, Passion Fruit Tangerine, Bubbly Probiotic Tea for a Happy Gut, it says. Uh, I don't know what the brand is. Uh, uh, I don't know. Whatever. But here, I'll read the little tidbit on the side. Uh, it says, you've, you've got a big, bright world in there. <laughs> Your gut is a community of 100 trillion microorganisms that does way more than digest. It boosts mood, drives energy, and strengthens immunity for starters. But your gut needs fuel to do the job. And that's where Health Aid Kombucha comes in. With living probiotics and deto detoxifying acids, it to restore um, detoxifying acids to restore body and mind from the inside out. Your sips away from a healthier gut and a happier you. It says it's got cold pressed juice, the acids, living probiotics, all this crap in this 70 calories. Oh boy. But uh, everything else is pretty much zero minus you got a few carbs and then a lot of sugar. Well, wow. 15 grams of sugar. <laughs> uh, it contains 10% juice. Again, I don't see, I don't know if Health Aid, I guess Health Aid is the brand perhaps. But it that looks like sounds like a brand. This looks is like is there an E on the end? Yes, A D E. That's got to be a brand. Okay. Well, it it definitely looks like it's trying to be. Oh, this is healthy. This is free because this is a medicine bottle. Basically, it's the brown with, bottle with, side with the anchor for it, no good reason. It definitely has that look to it. So we'll see. We'll see what it tastes like. <laughs> I've got the uh, Synergy GT Synergy Raw Kombucha, Strawberry Serenity is what it's called. I was so jealous when you opened that, Nate. See that the oh, it, carbonation there? It, it was yeah, like was this same thing. It does say bubbly probiotic. This has got more carbonate. And now I drink yours straight up. I mean, you don't need the fizz. I know you sometimes add it and it, you know, but I'm sure that will, it is probably nice to have a little fizz to it. It's living food for the living body, according to the side of the bottle, but 60 calories and 16 grams of sugar. So this one's got health aid. This is a little more healthy aid. Well, thank goodness. I, I think. <laughs> how, but, much, uh, how much sugar does it have? Six, you said 16 grams. 16, yeah. yeah. See, so in, when you homebrew, you really should be getting less grams of sugar than that. Um, I think my homebrews will be between two and six grams of sugar. But again, I guess it depends on how long you leave it in the hotel. True. To ferment or whatever. True. But if I you suppose. were going by kind of like normal, like, you know, Ooh. 10 days... Um, first ferment 10 days, second ferment, um, mm -hmm. it should be. About, so I wonder, like, the, I think that these uh, commercial ones are probably, you know, feeling that they have to go sweeter to attract the larger audience. Well, what, and which, which do you have? Yeah, so I have the Aqua de Kefir um, cultured tonic water from Mexico, and it's a peach pina. So I hadn't actually seen this one before. I definitely, the Synergy was uh, one of the first ones I started drinking. Um, and that was, if was I'm not mistaken, those were the bottles you were reusing was like that yeah, style. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. And this one has, um, this one actually has seven grams of sugar. So a little, okay. So this one's trying to So be, that's more on par with what yeah. you think yours are. And this is, I really, I really like this one. Actually, this is really tasty. So. You've already, put, like, there's not, it doesn't look like any's been out of there. Have you already tried you it? Drank I, it. I watched her. Yeah. So I'm, I am going to warn you guys, don't, don't, don't drink too much because especially if you're not used to drinking kombucha, if you were to drink a lot in a day, all of a sudden, I think that it would maybe cause a little upset down there. So Small amount down there being your stomach, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so your ankles are really just gonna flare up. Well, it does talk about you know the gut health and stuff, but I'm reading this and it says serving size is one bottle, and this is a 16 ounce bottle. Really? It's, yeah. So we oh definitely God. didn't drink. I mean, but I, this could be watered down. Maybe I don't know. Like with how you yeah. do, you know, when when you add the sparkling. Well, so that's, that, that's what I was gonna say about this synergies. It definitely is not as flavorful, flavorful as the ones yeah. you made. It's delicious, but 
I, yeah. So far, if this is what we're going on, yours. Did you are, did you add any of the uh, sparkling to any of yours? I did to, like, to the I, blueberry. No, not the blueberry ginger. The uh, that ras- lemon, the raspberry lemon. So, because yeah, I lemon. would imagine it'd be more on par with that. Like, is if you cut it, it's it's sort of like dilutes the flavor exactly a little bit, but I you still it. get it. So, so maybe you're right. Maybe we. I bet we we can each sample at least a little bit of this to get an idea. So, uh, it keeps talking about gut health and all this crap. What do you know about that? What is what is the benefits of drinking kombucha? What do you know about all that crap? <laughs> yeah, what do you know about that crap? It sounds like a bunch of crap. <laughs> well, just like you're saying, you know, you, there's a lot of um, bacteria in your your stomach, and scobies like being a kind of good bacteria. Um, to my understanding, they just help your stomach maintain like a good balance of those bacteria that just keep things like ticking along um, as they should be. So it helps to, well, it almost sounds like you you could get an upset stomach if you drink too much of it, but if you drink too little, I guess a similar sort of fact, I guess it just helps with the digestion process. Does it help you to stay regular? <laughs> I mean, what I, I don't know exactly what it's meant to do. I, I guess. Uh, I yeah, health and digestion. Like it, there's also like antioxidants. Um, there's even been studies to show that there are um, compounds that like combat um, oxidative stress. Um, and which, you know, obviously is, is then what your bot, uh, bottle alluded to, that it helps your mind and your body. Um, and it just contributes to the general well-being. Um, I, I know, as I said, I drink it every single day. Like, I don't really ever have, like, tummy upsets anymore. Or Yeah, that one's wild. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. really easy. Since we went around, since we tried all three flavors in the first one, I was kind of wanting a little taste of each of these just to have as a comparison. So this is the Strawberry Serenity. I got a feeling I like this one least. But... Yeah, you don't really like strawberry. Not a huge strawberry fan, although interesting. I, I can't remember if you mentioned this on or off the air, but you know how like some people put salt on their pineapple. Nate, you said you put salt on strawberries. Yeah. Maybe then I'd like it. I do, I do, I, I do like salt, so it makes sense. Um, do it on strawberries, watermelon. Oh, wow. That's got a really... Antelope. Pretty much any melon can take some salt. And tomatoes, my absolute favorite fruit of all time. Oh, yeah. So, Nate, Nate, I put a request out to ask if there was any particular fruit that um, I could use for my next kombucha. Mm-hmm. No to tomato. And Nate asked for tomato. I was like, no. Why not try? I mean, and then, and then she was like, do you like tomato juice? I was like, yes, actually, I do. <laughs> I mean, I, I could have maybe done it, but I didn't want to put you off kombucha for life because it would be I'm, gross. I'm going to have to get into the kombucha making game and I'll make a tomato one. We'll see. <laughs> Oh, I think I like is, this. Is acidity a factor though? I wonder because tomatoes are like super acidic. Mm. But we, if you can do lemon, you could do tomato. Yeah, I would think so. You know, it's funny actually because I was thinking about um what you were saying. Like, I bet that fruits that have more sugar in them naturally um will be more carbonated. Um, because if I think about it, like I use a lot of berries, which actually have like a very low sugar content, like in the fruit scale. Um, but I bet if I were to use like mango mm-hmm. uh, more pineapple like fruits that are really high in sugars like i bet it would get more carbonated um because they had you know the, the so is that what has a bit more work with is that them. what brings the carbonation is it still sugary and it's still feeding off that you know i I've, I've been asking like i just can't seem to get that part right and i've asked a lot of people people have different like opinions and views some people say that you need like really mature scobies in your scoby hotel and some people say you don't you just need to use like more sugar like I, I just but, haven't been able to work out. At the yet. same time, I'd be a little bit worried that if it's if you're leaving it in there and it's doing it too much, couldn't that the bottle just explode from? That would be a fear too. Yeah, I mean, well, and that's sure a, about that when the beer uh, yeah, and the brewing beer. process. Yeah. yeah, and and it's funny because you know you were you were saying you were really looking forward to the, the hearing the pop because you like that sound when I opened some of the bottles. Start, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was things. <laughs> I was like, well, I actually burped the bottles a few days ago just to make sure that they weren't <laughs> like, Babe, you they save it for crazy. the air how many times I do i gotta say you did save telling you that for the air <laughs> right oh. so he can't be too mad at me one, one of them had a bit of a pop the rest of them were a bit a little disappointing i'm not gonna lie but yeah. yeah it's all good so i'm not gonna lie this peach i think i don't know if anybody's if, if y'all have gone around That's the horn and tried all of them but i think the peach is the most flavorful and enjoyable for me and if i'm not mistaken you said it yeah this one has the least sugar so that's yeah. a bit surprising, but I guess maybe I just like 
the peach flavor over strawberry, of course. And then what was the other one? Passion. I usually like passion fruit, but I actually really did not like this one. Okay, good. Yeah. This is like that's, a weird. I think that's my least favorite. It's got a as weird well. taste to it. The okay. peach was really good. The peach was great. The peach this was my favorite. Tastes tastes like right. The peach is the best of this round yeah. for sure. I would say, yeah, the strawberry was good. And again, it was... is it just the bottle? Because it does. That is a medicine bottle. Maybe that's what they're trying. You're not supposed to enjoy taking your medicine. These ones are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's not true, man. I remember when I was a kid. I loved grape diamond tap. That tasted so good to me. I don't know if they even make it anymore like that because I bet kids are just drinking it by the bottle. You know, like you, you shouldn't be able to make a medicine taste like that. You yeah. remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah I know exactly. The what liquid you're grape about. diamond tap. Oh my god! I'm trying to think. Like, I I had bronchitis a lot as a kid, and I always remember they'd put me on the the cough syrup, the good stuff with the with the codeine, and they would always <laughs> like the pharmacy we went to ask what flavor I wanted, and I was always into the bubble gum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh! Did you guys ever? So this might be a British thing, but there I can't remember why I was taking it, but I remember it. You know, every now and again I would have it as a kid, but it was like a banana flavored medicine. Ugh. You know, that would have been a non-starter for me. Yeah. They I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. There's all, I mean, they, well, they try. You're curing. I'll, I'll just have that. They try and cover <laughs> any type of medicine with stupid flavors when you're, you know, when it's yeah. for a kid. So I loved it. I was, uh, that was like a treat. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like that, that grape Dimetap, dude. Oh man. I loved it. That was the night. That was the best part. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh yeah, let me get that. Let me get that. Uh, I don't know. An eighth of a shot glass little sip of it oh yeah, that's funny so that's the only flavored thing i remember like i don't think they were you didn't you know, have ma making medicines taste nice for kids well surely they had like you, you did have like the vix cherry throat spray yeah. you didn't do any of that no like, that didn't exist no no, no. When, I feel like cherry was the most common flavor of medicine when you were a kid Britain almost have this uh, like it's like they're they're proud of the fact that they can just be as uncomfortable as possible. They, they don't like to make anything easy or nicer. <laughs> we mm. we just want to go through it stoically and be proud of ourselves. For so you're saying you just don't even take medicine as a kid. Oh yeah, oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> you just walk it off. Walk it off. Rub some dirt, dirt on it. it. <laughs> yeah, nah, rub some dirt on it. Well, yeah, I think I'd say the uh, the you know. Mass produced kombucha goes to Aqua de Kefir, which you said that you had never even heard of this one. Before, I think that's but... that's new. That's, that was a new one for me. But what is it? Where does it even it says cultured tonic of Mexico? Is it actually is it actual kombucha? Where does it say on here that it's kombucha? Oh my gosh, is it maybe not kombucha? <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not kombucha, babe. It was just in the kombucha uh, aisle of the fridge, and it is in the fridge if MD's looking for it. Like that um... one says kombucha. Does the medicine one say kombucha? I don't think this is kombucha. The medicine one does say kombucha. It does. It says it has live probiotics and stuff in it, doesn't it? It says nourishing hydration. Oh. Organic, caffeine-free, dairy-free. Nourish your thirst. Oh, my gosh. So the best, the best kombucha of the day we have <laughs> not, not, it's not kombucha. even kombucha. <laughs> so it's just uh, aqua de kefir. I don't know what kefir like is. Kefir, yeah. I think that's a place. Water, because it's water of. I'm assuming it's. I don't know, because you get like kefir lime. I'm not. I'm not sure what. Well, yeah, those come from mean. a place too. Just like oh, oh here yeah. lime comes from the. Please the note, islands. kefir is a fermented beverage that has naturally occurring alcohol. Oh boy, so oh much gosh. for dry January. Do not consume <laughs> if you are avoiding alcohol due to dry January. <laughs> uh, pregnancy allergies, diabetes. So, it doesn't say what sort of alcohol content it might be, but. I think it'll be very, very low. I guess I'm you're sure not supposed to drink this too. if you're pregnant or whatever. Oh, yeah, because this one says, like, yeah, please, that one has please avoid one. if you are pregnant. Oh, my gosh. I can't even drink it if you're pregnant. Okay. Is that all kombucha? I didn't know I mean, that. it makes sense if if because technically yeah, there yeah. is some alcohol in there. Well, it, live yeast is weird, too. Yeah. Like, there's so many things you can't. You can't have deli meat. Yeah, yeah. There's so many ridiculous mm. food restrictions. This says This says very broadly, allergies sensitivities or religious beliefs if don't you drink have, it yeah if you have any religious beliefs do not drink kombucha if you have any god there's no kombucha for you <laughs> yeah. but it is made with pure love 100 pure love <laughs> mm. so well, do not shake swirl gently and yeah store upright. If, if i had shaken that we would have had some troubles <laughs> yeah it'd been all over it was the coming plate. out of the top i'm gonna pour more of this aqua de kefir since it's not, kombucha, it's not kombucha. i think we, i think i can drink more of it so <laughs> it'll just quench my thirst but this was a, a very interesting uh, show. I hope everybody maybe learned a thing or two. Thank you, uh, BB, for coming in. And, of course, 
If you have any kombucha recipes, if you're a kombucha er, is that what you call it? I, I, I kombucha yeah. brewer, kombucha kombucha brewer probably would be the best thing. If you're into that, feel free to email Drez at 1053thebear.com. I can pass on any sort of recipes or any tidbits that uh, you think you might want to uh, bestow and uh, further the awesome process. You've been doing it for two years. It's it's been night and day compared to when you first started. These are all very drinkable and delightful. Oh, yeah, I remember, I remember sure. some of the early batches. I was like, mm, mm, you can yeah. drink that. Because I didn't, I think one of the things I didn't realize was you had to, on that sack and ferment, you had to leave it like just on the counter. You couldn't oh. put it in the fridge. As soon as it goes in the fridge and gets cool is when the fermentation stops. stops. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that, that was something I messed up on at the start. <laughs> I was like putting it straight in the fridge. That was for like the uh, first year or so, right? No, no, it wasn't that long, but it was, it was a little while. Um, and then also I've, you know, if you are interested in doing it, if you don't have a friend who's brewing kombucha, you can actually buy um, scobies online. Um, and sure. they'll come in like a dry uh, package or something. And then, you know, you can just then add the tea and, and start. Bring them to life. Yeah. Awesome. But it is fun. And I, I don't, do you feel like your, your tummy's been better since we started drinking kombucha? Well, I guess it's been a couple of years now. I mean, I, oh yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I used to get a lot of stomach aches when I was younger, when I was like a kid and stuff, but I can't remember the last time I had a stomach ache. Just, I mean, I guess every now and then you eat something that was just doesn't agree with you, but I don't think that's the kombucha's fault. Or is that what it's supposed to do? Is this supposed to be anti, you know. for all those buffalo wings. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I can't imagine it's that, it's got that much pull, it's a but. Miracle beverage. Yeah. No, I think it, I think it's good. I mean, and it's, especially when it's tasty and enjoyable to drink, it sounds like it ain't hurting. So uh, yeah. keep it up and it's, and uh, I appreciate you coming in. All right. Thanks guys. All right. That's a wrap on Bruce Day Tuesday, time. another dry edition. Uh, <laughs> next week, I think we are switching it up again. I have another show planned. It won't be kombucha. It won't be uh, won't be anything with alcohol, but it should be a pretty enjoyable show. I'm looking forward to it. Me so as well. we'll take a quick break. We'll get back with the tunes right here on 105.3 The Bear. We'll see you.